Purdue just massacred Utah State, 106 to 67. So much for NCAA tournament demons. With this group, they look incredible right now. That, for my money, was the best performance I have seen from Purdue this entire season. They got to be feeling good. Cart, what did you see? That was a that was a masterclass, like a, a true just team masterclass domination, start to finish. Uh, 56 percent from the field, forty eight percent from three. They made eleven of them, like eighty two percent from eighty three percent from the line. Edie had 21 and 11 and a half. Uh, they did all this with Braden Smith in foul trouble for most of the game. Uh, TKR had a dominating game on the offensive glass and just in general. I think he chipped in. He ended up with 18 and 8 in this game. The three assists to go along with it, two blocks. This team is just, like when they're playing like this and getting the type of contributions from other guys, like they had Foster Lawyer had 15 in this game, six assists as well and then they had a quiet braid night and they were still just able to dominate uh this game and and defensively after somewhat of a i wouldn't even say a rough start uh i, I just think utah state was hitting some tough jumpers uh guards like ian martinez were kind of using their size uh to shoot over uh purdue guards but you know once those stopped kind of falling the uh, utah state looked like they were in hell <laughs> and, they, and they went long stretches without scoring and purdue did not yeah, I think uh, I, there were a lot of people being like, ha ha, wow, Mountain West, like, uh, you beat Utah State, this means nothing, whatever. That was not my read on this at all. My read on this was that Utah State's a very good team, and Purdue just absolutely eviscerated them. Like, th you cannot watch that game and tell me, like, oh, Utah State's just awful. It's not what happened. What happened was, like, Utah State showed up for the first 10 minutes and was ready to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with one of the two best teams in the country – and then every single player on, in their front court got in foul trouble because there's no way to guard Zach Eady at all. They were fouling him. So they, they all got in foul trouble. And then Sprinkle had to go to a bunch of bench guys who should not be playing in this game. The bench guys were woefully unready for this. There was like a 16 to 0 run over the next 10 minutes that, by the way, like was led by the defense. Not, not that Purdue's offense wasn't hooping, but like, Utah State didn't even get a quality look for like eight consecutive minutes in this game. And part of it, again, was that it was their bench guys on the floor because their starters were in foul trouble. But part of it was like Purdue was just locking these dudes down and Zach Yee takes everything away at the rim. Uh, I thought this would be a tough matchup for Purdue because I didn't like the idea of Edie guarding Osibor. Like, I, I just thought he might get in foul trouble. Nope, not what happened here. It was the other way around. Like, is Zach Edie erased everybody on Utah state the whole game. And um, I don't know, man, I, I think we've seen Purdue be great this year. Obviously they're 31 and four. Of course they're great. Maui invitational was special at times during the big 10 season special that road win in Champaign that we saw special without a doubt in my mind, this is the best I've seen Purdue look in a 40 minute game. It's not close. And uh, it's scary. It should scare every single team in this tournament. I tweeted it. If Purdue plays like this, I don't think anyone can beat them. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if I go that. I mean, I still think that, you know, if there's a, I, I think that if UConn plays to their top level, it'd be like two of the best teams going at it. I don't know if Purdue, like I can see Purdue winning that game. I don't know if they for sure win that game, but yeah, if Purdue's going to play like this, like it's, it's, it's net cutting talk time. Like this, that's, I don't know. I don't know many. I don't even know if like a team like UConn would even be able to beat them if Purdue's playing like this. Yeah. And we'll, we'll save that for a hypothetical, like got to get there to earn the preview of that. Right. But yeah. uh, you, UConn looked great tonight too. They were up 30 on Northwestern very quickly. And uh, I, I don't know. I just I think Purdue would beat UConn right now if they play the way they did these 40 minutes. I mean, we're talking like, just to be clear what we're talking about here. Zach Eady didn't play the final 13 minutes of this game. Because they were up so much. Like he had he had 21 and 11 at halftime. That's absurd. Like I, I tweeted out the comparisons to Tyler Hansbro and Sean May and Anthony Davis's NCAA tournament runs when those guys led national championship winning teams. Like in two games, Zach Eady in the first half is averaging more than those guys did for 40 minutes. Like he genuinely, Zach Eady could have gotten 40 and 25 tonight if they yeah. needed it. They didn't need it because they're that good. Like and uh, I think this was the first time, at least in the big moment, 
we can put all the shooting concerns to bed. I mean, they've been the number two shooting team all season long, but like 11 threes, 48% from three in this game. And that's how they created separation was they were just pouring in shots. Yeah, I mean, it was different guys hitting shots, too. I mean, Miles Colvin went three for five in this game. Gillis went two for three. Heidi hit one. Brian Waddell hit one. Lance Jones hit two. Fletcher, like, you know, th this team isn't isn't like a, a fluky, like, three-point shooting team. Like, they're one of the they, – I think – you said they are the best, right? They're the best three-point shooting team in the country? Second best in the country. They're the second best three-point shooting team in the country. Oh, first. excuse me. It's been updated. They're now the first. In they're the now country. the first. Well, there you go. Like, you know, uh, for – for all the things we said about like how teams are going to try to check Purdue and, you know, if they do the whole doubling Edie thing and our guys going to, you know, get spooked and not hit shots. And that has not occurred up until this point yet. And even if it regresses to the mean, they're still hitting 40% of their three point shots. So uh, yeah, this is a, this is a team that no one wants to see in the tournament, whether they want to admit it or not. Yeah. And now that everybody's filled out their bracket and nobody can adjust it, I can say this, which is why I landed on Purdue as my national champion. Hey, don't overthink it. This this is the team with the generational player, the best guy in the country, the two-time national player of the year. And oh, by the way, they surrounded him with the number one three-point shooting team in the country. So like, like we have that guy and then we have the best shooting team in the country. And people wanted to like downplay this group. Like that's... It's insane to me. That's like the most perfect offensive roster build we've ever seen, right? Like yeah. a, a player that good with shooters everywhere is the best offensive roster build I've seen in my lifetime. So I, I it comes down to what do they do defensively? And at least in this game against the Utah State team that I think is pretty good offensively, they cut off the water. There was nothing. Yeah. They, I mean, they couldn't do it. They couldn't do anything. Once you, if you're not going to, and it sounds stupid, but if you want to beat a team of Purdue's caliber, like you're gonna have to do like the the tough shot making thing for a while. Like you're gonna have to do like the make the make the tough jumpers like over their guards thing. Because if you don't do that, there's you're getting nothing at the rim with Zach Eady. And then on the other end, Zach Eady scoring or getting fouled, or you're getting a three put on your head. So it's like you gotta you gotta play you gotta play a pretty flawless offensive game to have a chance against Purdue. Zach Eady only played 27 minutes. Braden Smith was auto bench with two fouls in the first half. And Purdue won by 39 points. Yeah. <laughs> like, come on, man. It's so ridiculous. Uh, just quick player hits for me. I thought Fletcher Lawyer had like a quiet 15-point night. That's so ideal for him. Six assists to zero turnovers. Very subtly, I thought this was one of his best performances of his career in a Purdue uniform. Lance Jones continues to struggle offensively a little bit. He did hit two threes, uh, but it took him a while to get going. Are you concerned at all about where Lance is at right now? Uh, the only reason I'm not concerned is because I think this is just who Lance is. Okay. Like, he's, I think he's that... probably probably stagnated a little, though, right? Yeah, he, he stagnated a little bit, but I think that run that he had at that like little month stretch was a little like Mackey Mickey mouse of him. <laughs> like, I think this is more so who he is as a player and that's fine. And like, just it, do you want him to cut down on some of the crazy plays that make you pull out your hair? Yeah. But like, like you always love to say, Greg Lance Jones is not going to be the reason this team wins a championship or not. The it, Mackey it mouse run. Is that what it was? Yeah. The Mackey mouse run. That's what it was like that. It was cute, but like, it, yeah. I think it might just be over. kind of. TKR, as you mentioned, 18 points in 25 minutes, 18, eight rebounds, three assists, two blocks, and a steal. Uh, I want to let everybody on earth know this right now. Trey Kaufman Ren's going to be an absolute problem next year when Zach Eady leaves. Uh, when when he is the featured post guy on this team, I think he's like immediately an all Big Ten player. Immediately. He's going to be so good. Like yeah. that, the the spin move drop step he had that dropped Osibor was absurd. Yeah, TKR is really, really, really good. And in in this game, because, you know, Edie didn't play, you know, Edie only played 27 minutes. There were some times out there where Kaufman Wren was out there by himself, and you saw what it looked like when Kaufman Wren is going to be the, the the main five focal point, what it looks like. Yeah, just absurd. Um, yeah, Braden was in foul trouble. He caught that one where he – I don't even think he threw the chicken wing, but Utah State sold it and flopped. Are you worried about Braden and – foul trouble at all it's a couple straight games he's picked up two quick ones no the only thing that worries me about Braden is he, he's he uh 
he seems to be a little too concerned about the referees from like he's like he's letting it get to him. He's letting it fr- like he's letting the refs kind of knock him off his pivot a little bit, which I don't I'm not like saying it's an awful thing. I get mad too if I'm getting called for a foul with somebody flopping. But there was a lot of like looking at the refs, like hands up, like where's that call? Where's my call there? Why is that on me going on? But that might just be how he's letting his frustration out because he knows he's he can play better than that. But uh I'm 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 not worried about it, no. Yeah, I'm not either for the record. I'm just curious because it's happened a couple times down the stretch here. Uh, Heidi off the bench, 10 points, four for six from the floor. He also had a block that was highlight reel, and then he immediately, like, really shit-talked. That got my attention. I just want to get this on record as well for the receipts. Cam Heidi's going to be a dude sooner rather than later. I uh, I love him going forward and what he's going to be in a Purdue uniform. Mackie J. Clayman. Yeah, he's gonna be good. He like like really good next like year. Like Don Connect good? No. Okay. But, but like I don't know. I'm kind of terrified of Heidi, man. I, I think he has some like some mean shit to him. You think like Heidi's like an NBA player type? No, but I think he has like terrorized the Big Ten shit to for like I don't know. Like just he and everybody loves to say like he's a red shirt freshman. He's not a true freshman. Like as if that means anything to me. He has three years <laughs> of eligibility left. He's a I just think he's wired like a, a killer already, which you're not supposed to be as a freshman. Uh, Miles Colvin, three threes in this game in 14 minutes, which begs the question, is Miles Colvin the best non-rotation shooter in college basketball this year? <laughs> I mean, I, I rarely, rarely ever see Miles Colvin, one, not shoot it, or two, miss. But like the, whenever, whenever the dude gets 10 minutes a game, he's going at least two for three from three. Dude's an absurd shooter, and he's getting minutes. Now, he's getting minutes because of blowouts, I think. Like, he did play 12 minutes against Wisconsin, but he's played 12 minutes and 14 minutes in the two NCAA tournament games. He only played 12 minutes in Big Ten play once from January 1st to the end of the season. So, that's noteworthy. Paints got him on the floor in some form here. He's not doing that with Ethan Morton right now. I know you like that. I, I absolutely love that. And also, if Coleman is going to be – because I think he's actually been pretty good on the defensive end as of late. Uh, if he's going to do that, you know, it'd be a player that I would be like, you know, if Lance Jones is going to be on his, whatever he's been on the past month or so, or the past couple of games, I I wouldn't hesitate to, you know, maybe give, maybe a Colvin a look or Heidi in that situation, whatever one, whatever player. Yeah. We are going to have a Purdue preview of the Sweet 16 matchup against Gonzaga later this week. It will be probably a little longer than some of our previews and recaps have been these past couple weeks. We'll do our best to do our due diligence on that one. With that said, uh, I do want to acknowledge this. Purdue needs to just win the exact same sequence of games that they won in the Maui Invitational earlier this season. Do that again, and they're in the national championship game. What does that mean to you? And do you think they're aware of this? And what's it doing to their psyche? Oh, well, one, one, they're very aware of it. Because let me, I, I want to read this tweet that I've been tweeted at about 79 different ways, I feel like, since this game has ended and since the, the Sweet 16 teams have been established. Um, Purdue this year is 7-0 and against teams that are in the Sweet 16. Literally, they beat Illinois twice, beat Arizona, Bama, Marquette, Tennessee, and Gonzaga. Uh, there's I, I don't know any other team that has the ability to say that there isn't yeah it's crazy it's crazy um i said pre-tournament their biggest concern would be they get another team they should beat i think they've dodged that like from here on out it's a bunch of great programs great coaches and honestly i think historically purdue has fared better against those teams anyway so like I love where they're at. I love it. Does my title pick curse over? Is that what's happened right now? Uh, look, we're, we're, we're just the sweet 16. Let's, let's, uh, let's take it easy. All right. Well, I got through the first weekend. At least, at least can't say the same for you. That's gotta be something. That hurts, man. I really lost some first day to Golki. I'm sorry. It's tough. Uh, all right. Well, did you bet on this game? I was on Utah state plus the points and, uh, feel really dumb about that in hindsight. I was, I wasn't even, I didn't bet on this game at all. Smart man. Well, uh, 
if you wanted to be stupid like me, you could do so with our friends at MyBookie. MyBookie is the presenting sponsor of all things Sleepers Media in the month of March. We have a special sign-up offer, promo code SLEEPERS. You can get a deposit match bonus up to $1,000 as a first-time user. They have player props, futures, odds boosts, everything you're looking for in a sportsbook, expert picks and predictions for every game. MyBookie has that, so... Use promo code SLEEPERS, link in the description of this video. Thank you for watching. We will have a Purdue Gonzaga preview up later this week.